now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellas and girls, listen. You will hardly believe your ears. It's terrific. It's the exciting special new offer made to all you listeners to Challenge of the Yukon. And it's made exclusively by the delicious, nutritious breakfast cereals shot from guns. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Listen to how you can get an amazing new secret two-way signal flashlight that flashes red and green. This is no ordinary flashlight. It's not on sale in stores anywhere. This two-way, pocket-sized signal flashlight has been made specially for you. It sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. You'll say there's nothing like it for sending secret codes and messages. You'll want to order yours without delay today. Listen for full details in just a few minutes. Three men were in the Dawson jail awaiting trial by jury for the murder of a newspaper reporter who worked for Dave Carson. Two of the men were killers with bearded, weather-beaten faces. The third was more polished. His hands were soft and his face smooth. Until recently, he had worked as a clerk in Arnold Blenheim's bank. His name was Slade. He stood close to the bar door, his crafty eyes fixed on a fat, pompous-looking man was talking to the constable at the end of the corridor. I figured he'd come here to see us. Uh, who is it? You mean to say you don't know Arnold Blenheim? Oh, I heard plenty of him. So that's Blenheim, eh? He looks very prosperous. He is. Don't worry, boys. He'll get us out of here. Uh, me, I'd like to know how. That Mountie's got us dead to rights. You wait and see. I'll have to lock you in there with a the prisoner, Mr. Blenheim. I hope you don't object. I don't care about the other two, uh... Well, Slade, I never expected to see you behind bars. Step right inside. Thank you. I'll uh, be in my office at the end of the hall. Just call when you want me to unlock the door and let you out. Right. You uh, don't know these two, Mr. Blenheim. This is Breed and uh, this is Jake. I don't have to know them. You don't have to know us, Blenheim, but you better see that we get out of here one way or another. Uh Slade, what have you told these two? I told them everything. I told them it was you who wanted to know all about Devon and his father setting up an electrical plant at Gopher Rapids. You you told them it was I? I did. And I told them it was your idea to waylay that reporter, take his credentials and call on Devon. What are you going to do about it, Blaine? It was most indiscreet, Slade. Most indiscreet. What's more, they know that you had ideas of taking over the power project, Uh, taking it away from Devon if it looked as though it might be successful. Why, you fool... You bungled this thing from the beginning. All three of you are likely to hang for that murder. That Monty Sergeant Preston is staying right here in Dawson until the trial is over. We hadn't better hang. Well, I'll do what I can. I'll pay for your legal counsel and secure the best I can, boy. You will do more than that, Mr. Blenheim. Uh, What's that? Aside from the three of us, no one knows about your part in the murder. My part, indeed. I said your part. You sent me on that mission. You furnished the money to hire these two to help me. I know something about law. I know that as an accessory before the fact, you're just as guilty as any of us. And if the jury finds us guilty, I'll talk. I'll tell about you. I said nothing about murder. Don't you try to bluff me. You know very well I'm right. You better find some way to influence the jury. Hey, uh, if you want some help, my pal Turk Hoyt is here in Dawson. He'll do anything to help me if there's money in it. And he's very good at influencing people. Uh, Indeed. Don't look down your nose at me, Blenheim. 
Maybe you can use Turk and his brother. Just in case you want to talk to them without being seen, you go to their cabin just outside of town. Me, I tell you how to get there. Arnold Blenheim made sure no one saw him that night when he made his way through a driving snowstorm to a shack where Turk Hoyt and his brother lived. There was a lengthy meeting by candlelight, and money changed hands with a promise of more cash to follow when and if the jury brought in a verdict of not guilty at the murder trial which was scheduled to start in one week. It was two days later when the mighty lead dog, King, set the pace for Sergeant Preston's team of huskies. On King! On, you huskies! The Mountie had nearly reached his destination. He saw John Bevan's home ahead. Then he saw John Bevan and his slim wife, Margie, come out of the house and wave a greeting. There they are, King. Hello, John. Hello, King. Hello, you, huskies. Yeah, we've been watching for you, Sergeant Preston. And keeping dinner hot. Good for you, Marge. Come inside. Father's waiting for you. He has a surprise. He's going into Dawson with us, isn't he? Oh, yes. I'd better. He's one of the most important witnesses at that trial. You, Sergeant, come in here. Come in here and see what I have. Go on, I'll take care of the dog. All right. You too, King. Come on, boy. Hello, Doctor. You're looking first rate. Yes, and feeling like a cub. (laughs) Well, sit down, Sergeant. Thanks. I tell you, Sergeant, it's a great thing to reach a goal. You've reached your goal? Might say I have. We found a way to use the water power of the rapids to run a turbine, which in turn operates a dynamo to supply electrical current. Now I know how I can do it on a large enough scale to furnish electricity to the light the whole town of Dawson. Oh? But here. Here's what I have to show you. What is it? You said it'd be a wonderful thing if a small electric light and a small battery could be fitted together in a case... Uh, that a man might carry in his pocket. Yes. You thought an article of that sort would be mighty handy, so you Mounties could communicate by light signals. Yes. Well, sir, here's your flashlight. <laughs> Why? Now, just push that button in the end. See there? What? Sure enough. It's got two colors. Now you're flashing a red light. But see here? Just push this lever... And you're signaling with a green light. <laughs> it's yours, Sergeant. A little present for me to you. When the other men in the force see this, they'll all want one. Thanks, Dr. Bevan. Thanks a lot. Well, I'm glad you like it. I wanted to do something to show our appreciation. You and King saved the lives of all three of us. Did you give it to him, Dad? You certainly did, John, and I think it's great. It's one of the cleverest things I've ever seen. Oh, oh now, Sergeant. I mean that, Dr. Bevan. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it, but tell me, Sergeant, how do things look in Dawson? For the trial? Yes. There's no doubt about the outcome of the trial. When Slade and his pals were here planning to kill you, they admitted murdering that reporter. You three are witnesses. Your testimony will convince any jury. Mm, we'll be glad to testify. The three who are in jail will pay in full. There's no doubt of that. But there's someone who is equally guilty who is not in jail. Who's that? The man who sent Slade here. Slade worked for Arnold Blenheim, the banker. Blenheim's a reasonable suspect. He'd like to know about your progress here. Yes, that skinflint would like to take over our electrical plant. If he thought it would be successful. He's the one who sent Slade, and I'll bet money on it. You're probably right, Dr. Bevan. I, too, suspect uh, Blenheim, but I can't arrest the man on suspicion. Uh, We'll do our part in convicting Slade. Uh, When do you want to start back to Dawson? First thing in the morning. Our dogs are in good shape. They're ready to travel. I'll get our sled packed tonight. We can start whenever you give the word. Two sleds and dog teams headed south from Gopher Rapids to Dawson. And two men waited in the concealment of big boulders on the trail. They were Turk Hoyt and his brother Moose. Arnold Blenheim's cash was in their pockets. And they were watching for the sled so they might earn the additional gold they had been promised. Presently, they saw the first sled coming. Preston is riding the runners. That's old Bevan on the sled beneath the bearskin. That's just right, Turk. Now our job's real easy. They're traveling just the way I hoped. I don't see the other sled. It'll come along. The farther back of Preston it is, the better it'll be for us. Hope things work out like we planned. <laughs> they will. There's no other way they can work out. Do you think John Bevan and his father will testify against Breed and the others if it means a life of margin? <laughs> Not a chance. Sergeant Preston had passed within a hundred yards of the rocks behind which the two men crouched and continued on the way to Dawson. 
Ten minutes later, another dog team came along the same trail. Margie was on the sled, protected from the biting wind by bearskin robes. John was riding on the runners. Are you sure that cloth is tied tight over your face, Luke? It is. How about you, Yeah, uh, No one can see my face. Now we better pull the hoods of our parkas up so they won't see the cloth too soon. Yeah, yeah I guess that will do it. Hey, come along, Turk. We'll go out and meet him. Hey there! Hold on! Pull in the dogs! Help us! Stop for a minute! Hey, mister! We're in trouble! We need help! We need it bad! What's wrong? Here, I'll show you. Take a look at what I've got. John, look beneath the hoods of their parkas. They have their faces covered. They must get them be... up. What's this? I said get them up. You too, lady. Get your hands out from beneath that robe. Keep them in sight. See if there's any guns in the sled. I'll take a look. Give me that fish. You... Oh, you just wait. You'll hear about this. Stay right where you are and keep your hands where I can see them. Be sure you look good. There's a rifle. Uh, hang on to it. See if there's any other weapons where the girl can reach him. Let me off this sled. Stay oh. where you are. Take your hands off my wife. Hey, get back. Now, listen, mister. We're taking your wife and your sled and dogs with us. They'll all be safe. You needn't worry about a thing until the trial is over. So that's it. You go right ahead and appear as a witness. Only remember, if the jury finds those prisoners guilty, they'll sentence four people to die, not three. And the fourth one will be your wife. You can't get away with it. No? If anyone comes looking for us where we're going to hide for the next few days, your wife dies. And if the prisoners are found guilty, she dies. On the other hand, if the jury brings in the verdict on not guilty, the girl will be set free and she'll drive your dog team into Dawson. Let's get going. We're going to. And you, Bevan, I'm knocking you out. When you come conscious, you start for Dawson. Don't try to follow our tracks unless you want your wife cured. You're knocking me out. That's what I said. Oh, John! Oh, John! Stay where you are. No! Don't let me up. You killed him. Oh, you killed my husband. Just knock him out. We'll come to in a few minutes. Give me a hand here. we got to tie this girl to the sled. We'll tie her. We'll blindfold her so she won't know where she's being held. <laughs> you know, this is the easiest cash we ever earned. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Listen, just listen to this. Here's your chance of a lifetime to get in on one of the most terrific offers you ever heard. Here's something new and different you'll go for. It's exciting, and it's made especially for you. Here it is, fellas and girls. Today, you can send for your new official Challenge of the Yukon secret two-way signal flashlight. That's right. It's a secret signal flashlight. It's a real flashlight, a special kind. It's two-way like the one Sergeant Preston has. It sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. Believe it or not, it actually does flash either red or green. And it works with a simple flick of your finger. Man, oh man, imagine owning a two-way signal flashlight like this. A kind of flashlight like Sergeant Preston's. Think of being able to use it for signaling and for sending messages and secret codes. Why, it works much like blinker signal guns used by the Army and Navy. Yes, this secret signal flashlight has a special plastic directional signal barrel. That's to prevent others from detecting your secret signal flashes except the person at whom they're aimed. What's more, you can carry this two-way signal flashlight wherever you go without anyone detecting its presence. That's because it's pocket size, less than four inches long. It fits snugly in your pocket without anyone being the wiser. Talk about exciting. Say, you can make up secret codes and messages to your say friends. For instance, two red flashes might mean danger, stay back. Or one green flash and one red flash might mean help, come at once. Say, your new official Challenge of the Yukon signal flashlight is the real McCoy. It's a beauty. Its color is glistening, shiny black. And it has Sergeant Preston's name in his own handwriting across the side. Important, too, this special signal flashlight comes complete with standard replaceable electric bulb and battery. Send for yours today. Send now for your secret signal flashlight, an amazing real flashlight that's two-way, that sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. All you do is send 25 cents in coin. That's all. Just 25 cents and one box top from a package of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Print your name and address and send it once to Flashlight, Chicago 50, 
Illinois. This official two-way signal flashlight is not on sale in stores anywhere. To get yours, remember, send 25 cents and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. The swell-tasting breakfast cereals shot from guns. Hurry. Don't let anyone get the jump on you. Address your letter today to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. I'll repeat, that's Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston reached Dawson with John Bevan's father. The older man secured a room in the hotel while the Mountie took care of his dogs, then went with King to see the constable. A little later, John's father came into the constable's office. He and Sergeant Preston were there when John came down the street alone. He was staggering and on the verge of exhaustion. He opened the door and nearly collapsed. Well, John! What's happened? Preston... Preston, grab him. He's going to fall. I have him. There's a couch here. What's the matter with you, son? What's happened? Where's Margie? Close that door, Dr. Bevan. Here, John. Lie down. Two men. I couldn't see their faces. The hoods of their pockets were pulled forward. Beside their faces were covered with handkerchiefs. They took Marge. Where'd this happen? Not far from here. It's near Skittle Rocks. Go on. They came out from behind the rocks asking for help. When I stopped the dogs, they came close. Then they pulled guns on Margie and me. And Sergeant Preston, the constable, and John's father listened intently while the young engineer told about the adventure on the trail and the capture of Margie. King lay on the floor nearby, his ears alerted. The great dog sensed that something had happened which would mean action for himself and his master. King and I will hit the back trail to the Skittle Rocks and pick up the trail of your sled. <sighs> Didn't you hear what I said? They'll kill her if anyone goes hunting for them. There's only one way to save her life. We... We can't testify against Slade and his partners. Not testify? No, I can't testify as a witness, and neither can Dad. The conviction of those killers depends on your testimony. <laughs> Their conviction will mean the death of my wife. They can't be convicted. Not convicted? They killed a man in cold blood. They must be found guilty and pay. <sighs> no. No, I tell you, no. John, listen to me. What sort of justice do you think we'd have if those killers could go free because of abducting your wife? <sighs> Margie's life means more than anything else in the world to me. What do I care what happens to Slade or the others? If Margie dies, it'll be the end of everything. You're going to court and you're going to testify to Slade's admission of murder. No, Sergeant. And so are you, Dr. Bell. I won't testify. No one can make me. Now, hold on there, John. Don't try to bulldoze the law. You're going on the witness stand and you're going to answer questions under oath. All right. All right, I'll answer questions under oath. But I'll answer them so the jury will have plenty of doubt about the guilt of Slade and the others. I know how you feel, John. You're in a tough spot, and I'm going to do my best to help you. Perhaps we can find Margie and get her back before the trial's over. That trial will be over mighty sudden, Sergeant Preston. Starts in the morning, unless I'm mistaken. It'll be in the hands of the jury by noon. They've got to go free. They've got to go free. That's all there is to it. One king. <laughs> Where are you going, Sergeant Preston? I have some official business, John. I'll see you soon. Step outside with me, will you, Constable? Sure thing. Really dark. Yeah. Days are mighty short at this time of the year. Twenty hours of darkness ahead of us. That should be enough. What? I doubt if the abductors would travel very far after capturing Margie. They must have a hideout somewhere close to Skittle Rocks. You're going to try to find it? Yes, I am. But those crooks probably meant what they said. They'll kill the girl if anyone comes close to their hideout. Constable, they've thrown out a challenge. They've defied the law, and they can't get away with that. I'm going to look for them, and I want you to go with me. Hmm. Both of us should be in court when it opens in the morning. There's no point in being there unless the killers are convicted. And they'll not be convicted unless Margie's found. Then John and his father will have to give their evidence. That's true. But they can leave some room for doubt in the minds of the jurors. And even if there is no doubt, every man on that jury will know that a vote of guilty will mean the death of a girl. Hmm. If you were on that jury, how would you vote? Well, I... Would you vote for Slade's conviction knowing that it meant the death of Margie? I... Well... I guess maybe I'd rather see those crooks walk out of court scot-free. Exactly. That's why the trial will have to get along without us now. Pack your gear for traveling. All right, Sergeant. Are you taking the team and sled? No, just the three of us will go. Three of us? You and I and King. <laughs> Sergeant Preston and the constable reached Skittle Rock and examined the trail by moonlight. 
King quickly picked up the scent of the men who had been waiting behind the big boulders, then started following that scent across the open country. In the meantime, Moose and Turk held Margie captive in a cave. The illumination came from one small candle. It was a dim and flickering light, but it was sufficient to see that the girl made no effort to escape. You're sure in good sense, lady. You just sit there quiet and I won't have to gag you. My hands. Sorry, but they've got to stay tied. So are your feet. I suppose I should consider myself fortunate that you removed the blindfold. We don't aim to make things any more uncomfortable than they got to be. On the other hand, we can't afford to take chances. When we let you go, we'll have to blindfold you again and take you out on the trail before we turn you loose with your dogs and sled. We don't want you to tell folks where this hideout is. You won't let me go. Oh, now, that's where you're wrong. If we didn't aim to let you go, we wouldn't be so careful about hiding our faces from you. Who hired you to capture me? We're not talking. Just take my word for it that I meant every word I told your husband. If the jury brings in a verdict on not guilty, you'll go free. Otherwise, you'll die. And if anyone comes looking for you, my pal up at the front of the cave will spot them. And in that case... In that case, you'll murder me. You just better hope your husband shows good sense. That's all I've got to say. On a short leash, King led the way across country that became more rolling, then into the hills. It was after midnight when the lawman and the dog came to the mouth of a canyon. Wait a minute, King. We better stop here, boy. Plenty of hiding places in that canyon. Yes, I know there are. I've been through here a couple times. I know of at least half a dozen caves. Any one of them is big enough to serve as a hideout. Sergeant, we can't go any farther. That's all there's to it. Can't find Margie Bevan by staying here. Well, even with the moon gone down, there's light enough for him to spot us before we locate them. They can pick us off too easy. I've been thinking about that problem for some time. You got the answer to it? I may have. John Bevan's father may have given me the answer. How's that? Come here, King. What have you got there? This little cylinder is an electric light. Uh, an electric light? Yes, yeah, see here? Why, it's red. Yeah. I'll push this lever, and now it's green. The case is fixed so that the light can't be seen unless it's pointed directly at a person. I'm going to tie this cord around it, hold the button down. There, now it will stay lighted. I'll fasten it to King's harness, and we can see it as long as we're behind the dog. What then? I'll remove the leash and send King on alone. Steady, boy. <laughs> Just a minute now. Hope Marge will recognize you, fella. If she does, she'll tell you what to do. If she doesn't, well... King, sometimes you know what to do without being told, boy. I can't go with you this time. You've got to start things without help. There. Now we can watch that light and see where you are. Just a minute now. You make sure it can't be seen from the front. That'll do. Now, quiet, King. No barking, understand? All right, boy. On your way. Might as well lie down and try to get some sleep, Mrs. Bevan. You're going to be here for a long time. Sleep? Indeed. Hey, pal. Yeah, what is it? You better come here to the mouth of the cave for a minute. What's the matter? Do you see someone coming? No, but there's an animal out there sniffing around, heading this way. See it? Yeah. The chances are it's got the scent of the dog. They're way back in the cave, aren't they? Yeah, and staked. What is that? A wolf? I can't tell. Whatever it is, I'll try putting a bullet through its head. No, don't do that. The sound of a shot might be heard. We don't know that we're alone in this area. That critter's getting awful close. I... Hey, looks to me like a dog. It is a dog. It must be a stray. You don't see anything else out there in the canyon, do you? No. Here, boy. Here. He's coming here all right enough. Say, you remember that dog we saw with Sergeant Preston? This one looks something like him. Look at him. He's going to the girl. What's that green light on his harness? King! She called him King. It is the Monty's dog. King, help me, boy. The, the Monty must be near. Take him, King! Hey, look out! Oh, look out! Moose went for his gun. King charged and knocked the big man over backward. Oh. Then, like a flash, the great dog turned and leaped to Turk. Get away! Get down! Get away! Do it! I get on my feet. I'll kill that monster. Turk fell back, and then King turned again to charge at Moose. For the next few seconds, he kept both men too occupied to gain their balance. He saw that neither had the opportunity to bring a gun to bear. Then he heard his master. Come on, Constable. Here they are. Sergeant Preston. I'll kill you. Oh, 
Guess again, you rat. Here's one for you. Oh, I did it. You got it. You, you wait, don't, don't hit me again. How about that one? He's out of the fighting. Now let's see who these men are. Pull back the hood of that parka. They didn't call each other by name. Ah, handkerchief over your face, eh? All right, Preston. Now you know who I am. Moose Hoyt. This is his brother. Keep an eye on them while I cut the ropes and free Marge Bevan. Right, Sergeant. Tell me, Sergeant. What about my husband? Is John all right? He's perfectly all right. There. Your hands are free. Now I'll get that one about your ankles. Someone hired these men to hold me in the hope that John and his father would refuse to testify against Slade. There you are, Marge. Thank you. Now, Moose, start talking. Who hired you? Why should I tell you? To save your worthless neck. If you get hard to handle, we'll turn King loose on you. No, no, no wait. Don't, don't let that dog at me. Who hired you? It was Blenheim. The banker. Yeah. He... Hang it all, I might as well tell everything. Slade threatened to squeal and involve him in the murder of that newspaper man. Slade said he'd squeal if he was convicted, is that it? Yeah, and by thunder, Slade will squeal. John Bevan and his father will give straight testimony when they see that Marge is safe, and that testimony means conviction. Marge, you had a sled and dog team. Yes, they're farther back in the cave. Constable, I'll take Marge and the dogs and get to Dawson in time for the trial. Go ahead, Sergeant. I'll follow with these prisoners. I'll leave King here to help you. <laughs> That's all the help a man could ask. King... King, the way you fought those men. You kept them busy until the constable and I could follow the green light. Good work, King, old boy. When we get to town, we'll arrest the banker Arnold Blenheim. Then, this case will be closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Attention! Now's the time for action. Hurry, don't lose a single day. Send for your secret two-way signal flashlight. Yes, two-way, just like Sergeant Preston. Think of the fun of having your own special pocket-sized signal flashlight that's actually two-way. That is, it sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. It's out of this world for signaling, for sending or receiving secret codes and messages between you and your friends. You'll be kingpin with your special signal flashlight, so hurry. Put 25 cents in an envelope and enclose one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice and your name and address. Mail right now to Flashlight, Chicago 50... Illinois. Here's that address again. Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. This story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat... And Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Danger Signal. When I was in Dawson, the banker was killed. My friend John Bevan offered to help me get evidence against the murderers. He borrowed my signal flashlight and he was to signal me when I should close in and make the capture. I didn't know that the light had fallen into the hands of the outlaws. It was they who gave me the green light, and I walked right into their trap. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.